and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to take our simple character movement and add dashing. Let's begin. So here is the character we have. We can move him around using the keyboard, and the movement also tests for hitboxes, so if I move above, I cannot go through that wall. So now let's implement dashing. Our dash will be an instant movement, kind of like a short teleport. So let's look at the code so far. Here is our player character script. So you can see on update we have our handle movement function being called. This function deals with the basic character movement and it checks for keyboard input. It takes that input and it creates a movement direction. Using that direction it then moves him whilst testing for hitboxes. Okay, so now let's go down here. Make a private void handle dash. And we're also going to call this on update just like our handle movement. Now in here, the first thing we're going to do is test for keyboard input using our space key. So if the input dot get key down of the key code dot space. So when we press space, we want to dash towards the last move direction. So let's just move him there by modifying the transform dot position. We're going to increase it towards the last move direction by a certain amount. So in here, let's define a float for the dash distance. We're defining the dash distance in here, but we could also define it as a member variable and that way we could easily modify it to support some sort of upgrade system. But for now, let's keep things simple and just define it in here. So we're going to move them towards the last move direction and by the dash distance amount. So let's see, and we should be able to see the character move towards the last move direction by 100 units whenever we hit space. Okay, so here I am, I can move around. Now I move to the left, so my last move direction is to the left. Now if I hit space, Yep, there you go, he teleported to the left by 100 units. So dash distance is a bit too big, but everything else is working correctly. However, since we did a very simple transform movement, we can currently dash through walls. So if I go in here and I move up and I hit space, yep, I'm on the other side of the wall. That is not the intended behavior, so let's fix it. So back in our code in here, let's test for hitboxes the same way we did in the movement. Now, before we do that, let's clean up all of this code. So in here we essentially need to do a raycast to test if we can move and then we actually move our character. So let's do that in a more clean way. So down here let's make a private ball can move. We're going to receive a vector 3 for the direction that we want to move towards and a float for the distance. And in here we're going to do the raycast the same that we did up here using this direction towards this distance. And we're simply going to return if this, which returns a raycast hit, as you can see up here. So if the raycast hit dot collider, if it is null, then we can move there. So dot collider equals null. So now we have a nice simple function to test if we can move towards this direction by this amount. So up here on our handle movement, we can now clean up this code. Okay, so here is our cleaned up code. So first we define the base move direction, which is the one using our keyboard input. Then we have a move deer vector. We're using both so we can then modify the move deer whilst using the base move deer dot X and Y to test for vertical and horizontal movement. Then we use our can move function to try to move first in the diagonal direction. If we can, then we skip all of this and we just go straight in here. In here we set the last move direction, we play the walking animation and we move them towards the move direction. And if we cannot move, then we play the idle animation. And in here, if we cannot move diagonally, then we test for a move deer using only the base move deer dot X. So essentially testing for only horizontal movement. Then we do the test and again for the vertical movement and so on. Now let's also put this in another function to keep the handle movement function even more simple. So we made a try move function, it receives a base movement direction and distance and is doing the same thing as previously. And in the end it simply returns true if he did successfully move and returns false if he did not. So up here on our handle movement function it is now extremely simple. We get the input, we call it the move direction, we call the function try to move, if we can we walk, if not we idle. So our code is now much easier to read. Let's test to make sure that all of our cleanup did not mess up with the logic. 
So here we are moving around and yep, I cannot go through walls. Okay, good. So now that we have these two functions, it is very easy to apply it to our dash. So first let's reduce the dash distance to something more manageable. And here we can call the try move to try to move towards the last move here by the dash distance. So let's see if we can now dash whilst not going through the wall. So here I am moving around and if I dash, okay, still dash normally. If I dash upwards, yep, there you go. I can no longer dash through the wall. So now that we have the dash working, let's add a nice effect. Over here, I have a dash sprite sheet. This is the same sprite sheet that I use for Hyper Knights. So we're going to use this as our dash effect. Now we want to spawn it as a prefab when we dash. So let's make a prefab. So here is a prefab with a simple sprite render. And since this is a sprite based animation, I'm going to use the sprite animator, which is a very simple script we created in a previous video. It is very simple. It simply plays multiple frames one after the other. So it is perfect for this case. So this will play all the frames at 30 frames per second. And when it passes the last frame, it will destroy itself, which is perfect for a one shot effect that we want to use. So here in the code, we need to spawn the effect before we actually dash. So up here, first of all, we're going to need a reference for the effect. I'm just going to add it as a serialized field in here. So a private transform for the PF dash effect. And down here, we need to place the effect on the position before we actually dash. So let's store a vector three for the before dash position. And we only want to actually spawn the effect if we can dash. So we can use the if on our try move function. So if we did successfully move, then now we have the before and after position. So let's instantiate the prefab. So PF dash effect instantiate it on the before dash position. Then let's rotate it towards the last move direction. So modify the Euler angles, give it zero, zero, since we are in 2D and we just need to modify the Z. So I'm using the utils class to get the anger from vector float. This is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab for free from ntcodemonkey.com. It simply takes a vector three and returns a Euler angle. So it is perfect for this case. I send it the last move direction and it will return the correct angle. So now our effect is correctly positioned and rotated. All we need is the scale. The sprite has an actual width of 35. So let's define here a float for the dash effect width. This is the width of the sprite, which is dependent on the pixels per unit that you set on the import. So put it the dash distance divided by the width and everything else with one up. All right, so let's test and see if our effect shows up. Okay, so here I am moving around if I hit space, Yep, there you go. He teleports forward and there's a nice dash effect behind him. And again, I still cannot go through walls. I can teleport around, but don't go through walls. Okay, great. The way we set up our code, we can easily modify the dash distance and everything else should be the same. So let's see. Here I am and yep, I got a much bigger dash and the effect is scaled correctly. And again, I still cannot go through walls. Yep, great. Now the way we set things up, it means that if we go up here and we try to dash above, since we are within the dash distance, we don't actually move forward. If we, if you, if you wanted, you could improve the code to make it so that when you hit space, it would go right next to the wall. You would simply need to do a raycast and test the distance to the wall and then change the dash distance accordingly. So there you have it. We added a simple dash ability with a nice effect to quickly move our character around. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.